Thank you for joining us on The Wife versus The Expert Surviving Your Spouse Coronavirus Edition. We are super Surviving exci- Your Spouse? Yeah, surviving Corona with your spouse. Oh, I thought you said surviving your spouse Corona Edition. I think that's what you said. That's the same exact thing. No, it's not. Surviving quarantine with your loving and devastatingly gorgeous spouse. Okay. Thank you guys for listening to The Wife versus The Expert. uh, You guys can always send us an email. Uh, You can hit us up on Twitter at Denisha Danielle, at George Reister. Um, Yeah, and make sure that you guys subscribe to the pod or the YouTube video, however you're watching it, and make sure you send it out to a friend and tell them about it. And as my kids would say, click the notification bell. (laughs) So, um, So this corona thing, man, like how are you feeling about it? Well, you know how I've been feeling. Um, It's unsettling. It's scary. It's weird. It it makes you have all kinds of questions about the future um, and the present. So I think it's just kind of just the fact that this could even happen, um, which neither one of us have seen during our lifetimes, is like shocking. Yeah, but aren't you happy that you have a man who's prepared? Because, listen, listen, I oh there, there are so many times that I will buy things for, for the house just in case, make sure we are prepared for any sort of situation. And my wife is like, George, we don't need that, blah, blah, blah. And yesterday had to go out for just a second. And I was like, oh, man, I remember I got he masks. He didn't have to go out, but he, you know, he wants to go out. He's got to go get more things. I have to go save the world. I have to go save our house. He's one of the shopping hoarders, by the way. That is a lie. You, George. How much tissue? We don't have that much tissue. and, and We've uh, got a lot. We've, we've got, got enough for us. We have a big family, but there's seven. There's seven of us plus her. How many cousins? Trips, how many, eight people here. How many trips to the store have you taken since when? In the last two weeks. In the last week. Last week. I am a preparer. Like when I had to go out, I remembered that I had masks in the garage, and I come back and so I find them, bring them, bring them back in the house. She's like, "Oh my God, these are N95 masks." I'm like. What did, what did, else did you expect me to have? You didn't even know you had them, though. I knew I had masks. I you knew, knew you they had were masks. good masks. I knew that they were good quality right, masks. Right, but you didn't even know when you were buying them the quality of N95. Because I bought them over a year ago, Denisha. So what does that mean? Because I was prepared. I am prepared for natural disasters. I make sure we have enough water, food, all these things. And she is she wants to just have just enough to get through today. So and I'm like, we don't have feeling, to live George, by that. So how are you feeling with the whole coronavirus? Do you feel like you're prepared? Do you feel good? I feel blessed, really, because there's a lot of people who aren't, who don't have necessarily the resources to prepare. They are really like hard up for not being able to, you know, like pay bills, pay rent, all that stuff. So and having their family safe or healthy. So I feel blessed in that regard. Mm-hmm. But I'm just all about being prepared and vigilant and not like panicking. Because one of the things I think that we've noticed, and I think that some of you guys have noticed, is some people don't necessarily take it as serious as other people do. <laughs> so how do you guys deal with people? Because my mother, on for one, is not a... She's like, this is no big deal. This is just a flu, blah, blah, blah. And I am on the other end of the spectrum. And so this has become a topic that we can't even talk about at this point in time. Well, I... Uh, I Your dad, though, too. My dad, he's... We call him, like, the wandering man because he's always wandering, like, literally. Like, he can't stay still. So the quarantine is going to be a hard thing for him, but he also is just in his ways, like the places he goes and where he goes and God knows what he's always doing those things. And he's not like Mr. Washer <laughs> a million times a day. So I worry about him and he's got like a, an underlying condition. He's got diabetes. So he, and he's older now. He's, you know, 65. He, he would absolutely kill me if I, since I've announced that. 
But he's older, and that's... Wait, he's older than 65. How old is he? Yeah, no, he's 65. So if he's... He is my concern. It was initially a little bit of a challenge getting, like, Camille, my cousin, who's 20 years old, and Devin, who Devin kind of goes along. If you tell her, like, don't go outside, she's not going to go outside. Camille was, like, 20 and kind of like, why are they doing this? This seems so stupid. This is so extra. And, like, you know, couldn't understand. Oh, like them spring breakers. Skipping, <laughs> skipping the gym. And I was like, no, girl, if you go to the gym, you can't be around us. Like, we we are isolating for real. We yeah. are not isolating like 10, 10 people or less. We are isolating because if one of us gets sick, everybody ooh, gets it. It's just disastrous. Well, well like and, it and, would be disastrous. And we know that we are not in the high likelihood of people who are going to die. However, we don't want to. You don't know to- though. And honestly, every time they tell us something, it changes. If well, they say, oh, only old people die. Well, 34 year old died. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's like, dogs don't get it. Well, there's a dead dog now. Like, <laughs> like they, well, everything they tell us is not. Okay. So, it changes. So here is our, pre- here, here, the, here are our prepping essentials. Well, I should say mine. You need extra refrigerator space. I have been asking, well, I've been talking to, to Denisha about getting it another refrigerator for our house for how long? Years. Yeah. And she said, we don't need another refrigerator, blah, 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 blah. And then as soon as the corona hit, ah, no, no problem. Why do we no not problem. need another, fr- why do we not need another refrigerator? Because we stack it up and then all the food doesn't get eaten. So it's wasteful to me. That's why we don't need it. We need. We to, don't have space. We need to buy We have the food a thousand we people in the house. We, we have plenty okay. of food. Plenty um, of food. Another necessity. Weapons are a necessity. I know that some people are uh, gun averse. They feel like people will just do the right thing. I am not one of those people. I feel like that people will do whatever it is that you allow them to do. And truthfully, now that L.A. is on lockdown, if people don't um, like at a certain point, there are people who are not going to be able to, unless the government checks get out like they said, and they even are. if they do, then they could be a shortage of food, shortage of water, shortage of re- resources. So then, and with the police not arresting people like they are in Philadelphia and other places, like I'm like, yo, yo, you come up in the Reister household, listen, you're getting blasted. That's sorry. how you feel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. But uh, I think you need a generator. I'm a generator kind of guy. I, f- I would want a generator on the house. We what? What if we have an earthquake? Corona and an earthquake at the same time. They just had an earthquake in Utah like two days ago. Five point five point three or something like that. And everybody's fine. I'm just saying, everybody's fine. Was everybody fine in the Northridge quake? George, why are you yelling at me? I'm just asking, man. I'm just saying we got one. Can we you got, turn your we got one, phone on vibrate? I'm sorry. We got one uh, emergency at a time. Oh, 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 really? So that's how it works. Well, I hope. See, I don't. I don't hope on these things. I don't hope. I wish. I wish I would not be prepared for this. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I live by the wish factor. Um, but Denisha has some other uh, tips. Um, well, I just, I just kind of plan from an economic perspective. That's like my role in the family. You know, he's the doomsday prepper and I'm the, um, economic doomsday prepper. And so a lot of the research I've been doing was, um, like how to get this, uh, in order. So the first thing that I did was cancel all of our auto pays, like things that are kind of silly things that, right now are not really applicable, like gym memberships. Hey, how you gonna go to gym right now? I'm just saying, yeah. but if no, you no, have it I'm on auto friend. pay, they gonna deduct it from hey, your account. Yes, yeah. Um, and up until yesterday, I always have, and highly recommend like mortgage and utility payments to be on auto pay. But I think right now there, that's ways that the government is likely to send help. So I, I'm pretty sure by, op- April 1st, if things continue down the path that they are, there will be a, like a mortgage moratorium. Um, possibly utility payments. They've already changed the property tax deadline. 
Um, so I think that there's going to be some sort of moratorium, but if you have it on auto pay, they're going to, they're going to take that money. So that was another, another thing that I've been doing. Um, uh, a good friend of mine was very concerned. Her business is going to be, uh, right now obsolete for an old untold period of time. I told her for, for cash purposes to call her credit card companies and increase credit card uh, limits. Possibly, you know, if if you do have credit card debt, this would be a great time to uh, get those balance transfer cards and transfer that balance so you're not paying um, high interest while you have, um, while we have like this income kind of twilight zone. Uh, another thing that if you do own a business, I, I did this myself. I, I don't know how it works out, but they they have what they call disaster loans through um, SBA.gov. Disasterloans.sba.gov. We will put the link in the description. Um, that one is if your county is in an emergency zone, um, they get a bunch of information for you and they'll get you get you money. Um, I just found. Uh, Light, uh, Los Angeles has micro loans available that get to you within, I think they said three to four weeks. And they are like five to $20,000 loans just to get you, who knows, through payroll, through whatever. And um, I tweeted, uh, Mark Cuban was kind of giving the same advice. And he was saying, listen, before you fire anybody, make sure that you're pursuing these loans. I put out the link, he retweeted it, and he said, apply now. So if you don't want to listen to me, Maybe you'll listen to Mark Cuban, but I will strongly recommend that there will be some um, aid available for business owners. And so that's kind of how I've been planning to survive. And that's yeah. the, the doomsday prepping that I do. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Now, dooms <laughs> doomsday prep. So we have been eliminating people from coming to our home. That includes people who work in our house, like... Anything like that, like the handyman, contractor, the housekeeper, any of that, gone. You can't come in right now. So then now the question is, who's going to do all of this work? <laughs> and that's what we've been figuring out. Because with especially with L.A. closing, there's only so much work that you can do at the time because a lot of stuff is closed. So that, it, that it puts a premium on family time, puts a premium on... Oh, and then kids are out of school. That's where I was getting at. Kids are out of school. So LAUSD, if you have a kid in LAUSD or another uh, public school situation, they have a different setup. So they kind of give the kids a bunch of work. And then you as a parent have to figure out the time to do the work and all of that stuff. Whereas we have we have a um, kid in college. Uh, she's off for a second, but then her classes are going to be at scheduled times, which is optimal, right? And then we have an eighth grader whose school who have, is going on from 8.30 in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, like a normal day online, which I love because you want to make sure that the kids are, you know, like treating this not like it's summertime, but this is actually school time. So I think that uh, getting the kids on a schedule is probably at a premium, not letting them sleep in till 10, 11 o'clock in, in the afternoon, getting them up in the morning, getting them, you know, put put on some clothes, have some breakfast, sit down, talk to each other, clean up for a minute, and then get to your schoolwork, but not having them work all day, let them have some breaks in between, do something creative. Um, oh, I'll put up the, the link. I know most of you guys have probably seen it, for a, a template of a schedule for the day. So we're doing that along with putting together a a time, days and times for people to wash their clothes, for people to, you know, like do some of the housework because we're usually super busy running around all the time that we as a family don't normally do. So <laughs> what? I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing that we don't do housework. That's funny. Wow. Uh, <laughs> but we about to, because we have to. Well, I grew up doing housework. Okay. 
I don't know about you. I did too. I didn't even have a dishwasher. So who you think was a dishwasher? Who do you think? Who right here? Well, that's what happens. With, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. Because you're mad at me. <laughs> um, so. I don't even know what you're about to say, but it was probably something inaccurate. Oh well, another thing with the kids being home that drives Denisha up a wall is because Denisha grew up with just Devin. For, for I didn't grow up with Devin. Devin was my child. I know, but I'm saying like it was just her and Devin for 12 years before I showed up, and so <laughs> no. And, George and allows so, the, the, no. the problem is this is that George allows the children to be wrecking balls in the house, and then no. says that's Devin is because a girl. They're she's boys. created no. That's because they're boys. And, it's not and, just because they're boys. It's Devin was a creative. It was just you. She didn't have anybody to fight with, yell and with, and she wrestle had consequences with. for breaking things and and had respect for people's property. There's all of that too. Yeah. <sighs> Nish, they're boys. Then like, what does that this mean? That what... they should break things? No, the, no, no. They shouldn't break things. They How... do. They broke like six things in two days. That's not okay. They didn't break six things. Yes, they days. did. What? What was broken? Roman's, his toy, his tent. His tent is broken? Yes. Yes. How is the tent broken? It's, anyway, he doesn't even, he doesn't even know because you're not paying attention. What else, what else was broken? Uh, a lot of things. A you lot said of things. six things. I, I said like six things, yes. Okay, and, there and are. you named two. Are, you doing, are we doing a content check? Because I can do some content check. I'm just asking. No, I'm telling you, they break things all of the time. They drew on the refrigerator. Caden drew on the refrigerator. What I'm, this is it, what I'm saying. But it, wiped right, about, it wiped right that's off. That's not the point. You don't draw on refrigerators. I do agree with that. I do, I do agree with you should not write on the refrigerator. But it wiped This is right not the off. first time. He's written on a refrigerator? No, George. He's written on countless things, remember? Okay, look, look, look. So we So then that is that just off. a boy thing? No. No. Exactly. No. But I'm talking about the I'm talking about the playing ball like like they were playing basketball upstairs in their room, dunking on a little uh Did you take that basketball a thing? A mini goal. No. Why? I forgot. I was doing something, something else when you told me. Uh, like they dunk on a mini goal, all this stuff. And I just think that this is normal stuff that boys do because this is what I did. But then I it did. damages our home. This is stuff that I did. But it damages our home. We have a nice home. I'd like to keep you it nice. You just don't like the noise. No, I want to keep my house nice. I agree. I, I spent keep my house a lot of money on it. You spent a lot of money on it. Why would we not have people respect our home? I do agree that we have to have them have kids, anybody else that's in our house respect our house. But sometimes I think... Then that why are you making excuses for I'm that? I'm not. Sometimes I think that there's an unrealistic expectation for like for like meekness and quietness. Well, I, we going to have a problem with that, with quarantine, because they're going to take their little butts outside. <laughs> That's what. That's problem. how I was raised. I don't know about you guys, but I was raised. If you're gonna be loud and rambunctious, you go outside. That's outside it's, play. I, I I agree with that. That's it not was inside raining. play. It's, it was raining for almost two weeks. Then you don't get to do weeks. that. Then you got to do inside play. How do you get on a rainy day? So so these kids play sports every day, almost. They go to school practice so have so are, much they, energy i took them in the garage to work them out like at some, what point do in time some push-ups do what you gotta do you gotta go do something else but you can't get to you don't get to mess up the house i agree but because of but that where do you expect them to play when it's raining outside george they don't get to play every day and they'll be okay they have too much energy then they That's need what... to go in the garage and do what they need to do i don't know what they need to do but we need, we need to get a treadmill there I, i'll put them on the treadmill we are treadmill that they can break oh my god for real break i hope i wish i could see comments right now everybody would be agreeing with me everybody they ain't getting on the treadmill wife expert they agree with me Um, there is no there is no treadmill for the kids you understand that right if we got a treadmill there they don't get on the treadmill that would be part of the use of the treadmill you're are you joking no, I'm serious. No. Oh my God. We will we'll have oh my to discuss gosh. this. This later. is what I have to deal with. And then all of a sudden, in five years, he's going to be like, you were right. True. No. Fact. You always say I'm right. Um, after the, but um, 
Okay, so that <laughs> so you brought up consequences and discipline, mm -hmm. right? I grew up in a time where the the answer, if a kid's not listening, if they're not doing something, they do something you don't want them to, you whoop their ass. Like, like you give them a whooping. Mm -hmm. and how, did, how did that work out for you? It worked great. I stopped doing it. When? When? What you mean? You... Everybody talks about how bad you were as a kid. You never stopped. So what what are you talking about? No, I did. I just did different things. I just didn't so do the didn't same thing. So it didn't work. No, I just didn't know what whatever they told me to do, I stopped doing. I just did something else. Okay, and because so I was point, an active kid. I was active. That's not the that is not the problem. You you being active does not mean that you can be destructive. What do you want me to do? It this is out. why your kids keep doing it. You have got to really honestly sit them down differently, George. Okay, so what? Talking so, about just because you're active. Oh, he's. We're just gonna. Hold break up. My things. my my solution would have would have been to whoop him. And Denise is like, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We can't do that. And I'm like, because I'm a conscious listen. parent. And I'm like, I'm like, I turned out perfectly. And and I so. And there's a lot of other people who are agreeing with the expert right now. About what? About whooping your kids. I mean, I just don't think it works. I don't. I think it makes a kid probably more aggressive, more resentful. I'm not talking about punching your kid in the face. And you're teaching them out of fear. I think you teach them to fear you instead of to make better decisions about their actions, which is the goal is that they make a different decision than, than the one that got them in trouble. But don't sometimes that you need to learn a lesson, like a painful... I don't... Lesson. For what? What is it? Like what? What does... Which lesson does that work with? If I tell you don't come in at 10 o'clock and you... I mean, and you come in at 10, 10 But did 30. that stop you? Yes, it did. No, it didn't. No, George. yes, it did. Do you understand? I was late one time. Okay. One time. And then when you became an adult, how, how did that translate? It, what are you talking I'm about? I'm just saying. Were how did you, it translate how? Were you, did you, um, but you, I'm asking you a question. Okay. Did you buck up against, um, authority and no. structure? Nope. Are you kidding me right now? A a any of my coaches would, would tell you I did not buck up against authority. I, I would just. Control? Do you have a resistance to control? Uh, only when you're trying to control me. No, I'm just saying, in pe period, though, you have a resistance to control. For sure. Nobody likes to be controlled. What are you talking right, about? Right, but you have a, a sharp resistance. We're just getting down to it right now in the, <laughs> in the, in the quarantine talk. Um, but seriously, you have a, a strong resistance to some being told what to do. Period. And I think that's probably as a result of, you know, you probably not liking it when you were a kid. I don't think that there's not a person under the sound of our voice. I don't that even, likes I don't even translate things. I don't even translate the same things that you translate as control, as control. I don't feel like if you're telling me um, something that is for my benefit, I'm not like, he's trying to control me. I know. I doesn't even translate. Because you're super hard headed. I understand that you don't like that that's not how you process it. Uh huh. But but if you don't like the information that you get, you then dismiss that information. Wait, what? As as like as like listen, you, you listen. don't dismiss or the you, information. Or you or you say, Oh, oh, I I know you're right. I know that's probably right, but that ain't how I'm how I'm doing it. That that's how you. That's not me. You project much. That's you. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Or maybe this is a situation like our counselor Al always says that you are, that how your partner is feeling is usually a reflection of how you are feeling. See? See? So you got to pay, pay attention to that. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. See? See, I'm using that money. I don't know what you're doing with that money. Um, <laughs> so she's more of a, as you guys can see, of a volcano. In the situations, anybody that knows her. Okay. No, like you, everybody knows how you feel. Everybody knows when you're upset. So everybody knows when you're mad. That's a volcano. No, because you'll blow up. Maybe that's just a, I, I express myself. 
Okay, even she she's self described like she like she starts out the day like me. I start out the day at about a one, a one at one out of ten. She starts at a six, and so you get to ten a lot faster than I get. That's to 10. right, and that's not a bad thing. Okay, so you're the volcano. I am the iceberg. I would say that you are actually the volcano because you're the volcano that's actually got all the lava simmering and heated up and you don't act like it's not really there you look cool and calm on the outside and then you erupt and go crazy you're the volcano or maybe i'm the iceberg who's steady and slow but and <laughs> and just and just moving along not a whole lot of ebbs and flows but there's a lot going on underneath i'm just a normal some stuff. emotionally healthy expressive <laughs> woman and you are the train wreck that's what that <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's the funny. The hairy and, train wreck. And the funny part about it is, is that in relationships, you usually, you love at first the fact that somebody's so different than you and they compliment you in all these ways. But then when the relationship really gets into nitty gritty, you're like, I don't like the way this person handles this. But then you learn to be like my uh, wife who's come to see like, wow, like George is way different than me. And it is way better to... to <laughs> Yeah. What is way better? The way I do things. That's what you that's is what you meant to say. I thought you mixed up your words or something. You meant to say that I think that you're different than me and it's way better? Yeah, cuz oh, anyway. You just playing. He joking. That's funny. That was a good one. Oh, hey, but uh some coronavirus uh hold up quarantine advice is so I normally do all the cooking in the family. But during during this corona time, like the other day, I'm recording a podcast um, and Denisha comes in the door and comes in with a uh, with breakfast. And I boy boy she she almost got another baby out of me, man. Oh God. No. <laughs> I was so, I mean, not that she's never done it, but it doesn't happen often. And I was like, wow, this, it, that's the kind of thing that makes me feel loved. You know what I mean? Makes, and, um, she had just got mad at me the other day for no reason, but, uh, no reason y'all, but that no, made, I literally no reason. We, we just talked about this earlier. Um, <laughs> but that little meal made everything better. So I would suggest during your quarantine that you do something nice. For your significant other. Yeah, and then maybe he'll do something nice for you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rub your feet if you rub my feet. You told me you were going to rub my feet like three days ago and it never happened. I am not rubbing your feet. Period. Like, it's just out of the question. You have nerve. This woman, we're, we're sitting on the couch, on the on the sectional. And I put my feet on on her. And she's like, oh, get their feet off me. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> like two months ago was the first time she's ever in our whole relationship ever said this. His feet have gone really downhill. <laughs> like they were always bad, but now they How are dare you? disgusting. Hold up. Like you should put them up. You should show show your foot in its entirety. <laughs> anyway. <It> will... <laughs> what is wrong with you? I cannot. Hold on. <laughs> and the bad part is, is that, is that then she lies and is like, I don't like feet. Ew, ew. I'm like, when the hell did this come up? I don't. She ain't never I, said it before. I don't but then like feet. in the last two months, I've caught her rubbing Devin's feet, Damon's feet, Caden's feet, Peyton's feet, Roman's feet. I haven't rubbed everybody's yes, feet. Yes, you have. You rub everybody's damn feet. Well, then maybe is you. Maybe it's your feet. I'm your husband. I'm the one who married to you. That don't mean. That does not mean. FTK, I am man. FTK. I was. That does not Fuck mean. Fuck these kids, man. George, shush. <laughs> He's. I don't even. Anyway, I don't like your feet. They're really. I bad. just got a pedicure. <laughs> you need like. 18 more. I'm not even going to talk about you on, on here in your George, cliff. I'm not talking, I'm not going to talk about the cliff on here. George, cut it out. You know my feet are cute. I do have like a little callus on one of them, but my feet are cute. You know that. 
They're not bad. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got with you. I'm like it, Eddie Murphy and Boomerang. But so stop saying that my my feet are a problem just because you know your cliff, feet are a problem. It's a cliff. You ripped one of our George, sheets with your cliff. your whole cliff. foot is a cliff. I did not rip no yes, sheet. Yes, you did. Your whole, and it's it's ashy. It's rough. It's jagged. You know, like. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to put my feet up here. Put you your feet you up. Be They'll be like, ah. It's a, we had to change the rating on the uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, do something nice. Hopefully she'll cook for me at, at some point in time. Um, but, um, oh, there's a, oh, I, I want to talk super quick about, because we're, we're going to get into our TV show recommendations, all this stuff. But I want to talk about God's plan versus your plan, because I live in a world where I am, I am, I'm an optimistic realist, I would say. You're an optimistic optimist. No, I just, I believe in redemption. I believe because I've been redeemed. I (laughs) I was going to say, because you needed that. (laughs) I I believe in uh, that God changes things. I believe in, uh, I don't always look at the present circumstances I look for even little minuscule um, changes and say, okay, look. The minuscule of minuscule changes. And, and notice that that's where the door for change. Oh, it, it's with the it's with the, the road of a thousand miles starts with one step. Oh, gosh. So when you take a step, a step, a step, then all of a sudden you realize you're 100 miles in. And you're like, dang, I'm 10, 10% there. Then you keep on chugging. And Denisha, on the other hand, she if she can't see it right there in front of her face, no, 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 it's impossible. So that's God's That's plan. not true. That's not true. I have faith. I have vision. So of course yes, I have, have faith. Vision. So if I, you can't have vision without having faith because that would be a waste. You would not, it wouldn't even work because you wouldn't believe your yeah. own vision. So I have that. George, George takes his optimism to a new level, y'all. You have never seen like somebody, he'll be like, there are redeeming factors about Jeffrey Dahmer. I believe. He was somebody's son. See? Somebody loved him. And that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, and he, didn't, like he didn't eat everybody. Kind of irrelevant. It's kind of irrelevant. He treated some people. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying irrelevant. that. I'm saying that people had different um, interactions with him. Some of those were very negative. The, one, the, the people that he killed and ate. And then you have the this people who saying, had y'all. positive interactions. But there are some people, them. you know, like if George has an experience with a person that's 85% negative, he'll be like, but there's 15% positive for a fact. <laughs> over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like he will literally focus on the 15. At some point for me, I'm like, I, I see the 85 I'm with uh, the 85 is the 85 and I'm not with the 85. So I, I'm sure the 15 works for other people and maybe See, that's an 85 for them, but it, it is a, it's a no See, go for me. I don't discount the message because I don't like the messenger. So like, like for instance, hmm. like for instance, Alex Jones, the Infowars dude, he's an absolute maniac, crazy man, right? Mm-hmm. But he, but the lessons that you can learn from him are the way he has d- developed a following, the way he has monetized his business. Like there are some things that even with, if you take away the crazy, you can look at it and there are some lessons that can be gained from that. That makes me yeah, sound like a smart, pe- that's why people, I'm the expert. That's why you're the Some people are nothing but lessons for other people. Like that is, that is their existence on the earth is to be lessons for other people. So they can learn that this is this is what they are. You are just a lesson for another person. Wow. For real. Okay. That's a fact. And 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 if they don't, you know, heal themselves, then th- there's that. So that being said, you were talking about God's plan versus your plan. You're an optimist realist. Yeah. And I am uh, correct. <laughs> I am an accurate evaluator. <laughs> Go ahead. She believes in no redemption. That's if not you, true. You, if, That's not true. If you, if, you, if you have stepped on her her, her toes, you. That's not true. Thirty years ago, 
Mm-mm. That's not true. What if? Uh, Don't even say that. Semi. Um, but anyways, that you that uh, let's you know in relationships and all this stuff, let's try to lean on each other in these stressful times because it's really easy to let finances, kids, homework, all of this stuff breaking things, <laughs> grocery shopping, tear <laughs> your relationship apart. But you know, really try to really lean into each other. Make sure that even if you both are working from home, that you're giving each other time. Uh, to like, you know, like take off and do stuff with the kids and vice versa. Give the other person a break, opportunity to focus and all of that. Um, yeah. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Okay. Now it is time for a segment that we want to do. It's called Say It With Your Chest. Oh, yeah. I, I, you tell me about this. Say It With Your Chest. Um, I accidentally used my say it with, <laughs> with, with your chest already, but you can put on a timer right now. Put on a timer for a minute on say it with your chest. You get one minute to get whatever it is off of your chest, but you must stop whenever the minute is up. What are you doing? Just I don't know. Swipe. Stopwatch. There I yeah, am. There you go. Why are you always trying I to? I got to help you. I'm clearly. doing this. Okay. Ready? Yep. Denisha, I do not like <laughs> that you do not rub my feet. My, oh God! My, my my parents they give each other foot rubs. Like that's a I my love language. You always talking about some damn love language. Oh, you're making my, that up. My, There's no rub your feet. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your time. Thank you. My see what I gotta do with my love language is to is like acts of service. Um, yeah, acts of service is like super, super high for me because she asks me sometimes, George, do uh, you love me? Are you happy? I'm like, I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, I'm here. Like if I'm not, I wouldn't be here if I was not happy. So anyways, I want you to rub my feet and you rub everybody else's damn feet. Like you can at least do that for the man that helps provide all of this. Come on, like rub my feet. At least occasionally, like sometimes, but then you want a foot rub. Come on, man. Like, what makes you think that? Yeah, hey, you're done. I should get like five extra seconds because you interrupted no. me. Nope. Okay. You're done. Your turn. And do I respond to you? No, you can. No, you can't respond. You you got your own say it with your chest. Okay. Okay, go. Okay. You ready for this? <laughs> I'm gonna keep it 100. So I don't like. <laughs> I'm nervous. Um, the lack of hair cutting that's going on. It worked. Never mind. And I would like a much higher level of hygiene. Although, <laughs> although you have done better, being that we're quarantined and we're fighting a virus, you are washing yourself a lot more. But I would actually really, really like it if you <laughs> cut your hair, <laughs> lotioned your body, lotioned your feet, and made sure that your <gasps> breath was always oh fresh God. in the morning and the oh evening. My God. That is um, what I got to say with my chest. Are you kidding me? You're lucky that we can't respond to say it with your chest. Oh my God. The the propaganda. The I, I see what you did right there. I'm not going to respond to it though. Jay, they that, can look at you No, because that's not the rule. So I'm not going to do it. We're on a damn quarantine. How am I going to get a haircut? Anyway. YouTube. YouTube. I am sure there is Cut a... my own hair? Yes. You're going to have to. This is the same woman. You're not going to cut hold your on, hair hold on, hold on. for a this, month? This is the same woman. My barber was out of town. All this stuff. And she was like, yeah, you can just go to go go to anybody. I was like, go to anybody to get your hair cut? What the hell is wrong with you? Black men don't go to anybody to get their hair cut. Anyway. Well, go to yourself. You don't have to go to yourself. If you don't trust yourself, then what you trust? Anyways, TV show recommendations for your coronavirus uh, spouse watching, family watching, whatever. Uh, we just finished watching. I know everybody else has seen it at this point in time. Love is Blind. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about that. Maybe All American. We just started that. Yeah. All American. Uh, shout out Spencer Paysinger, Oregon Duck. Um, uh, what else have we been watching? 
Oh, you? I, I, I like you. She doesn't like you. It's okay. How's it just okay? It's just okay. It's creep, creepy killing killing people. It's like Dexter for like... I've dealt with enough of that in real life that I don't need it in, in a television show. Oh, uh, Ozark. Ozark comes out super quickly. Uh, comes out... What's that? Ozark comes out next Friday. So okay. that's super, oh, Ozark season three. Super okay. excited about that. Um... But to go back though, oh yeah, and of course we watch This Is Us, and we watch pretty much every single like married show that there is <laughs> on television. So we don't watch like Real Housewives and all that stuff. We actually stopped that because I think it was causing fights in our relationship. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like she was like, "Oh, look what Tanya and Susie and and <laughs> and and the housewives from New Jersey, Potomac." We did. We we did watch Atlanta. that show. What was that one? That one in Atlanta with all with the black couples on OWN. Tandy, you know I'm talking about. Why are you really looking at me like you have no clue? We no watched clue. all the ones. It was the dating show, and they. They find love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That show was good. What is it called? Oh my god. Love something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ready was... to love. Ready yeah, to re love. Ready, ready to, to love. love. Hold on. That was good. Um, and we watched Married at First Sight, all of these things, mm. and we. Ch it's funny because we watch these shows and we're we're dying. Oh, love and lock up. Yes. We watched she that. Loves love and you lock love that show too. Don't even try it. You I love just that can't show understand too. why you would get with a prisoner. I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. Nothing. I can't either. I, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't know what you're talking about with that. I but, got nothing to did, do with nothing. Were you writing pen pals to a prisoner or something? No. Oh, you got some secret I don't know? No. Oh. All my ex is doing things. Except one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he might be on love after like a fact. Um, so love is blind though, because this was a show that everybody watched on Netflix. I liked it. Denisha liked it. So, what was your take on Love Is Blind? Because initially she thought it was fake. Because when you look at the credits, some of them names is different. Yeah, the names don't match the name on the show so I was like is this scripted and they're pretending it's whatever so I didn't know but it's so old why are we talking about love is blind nobody talks about that anymore okay so what do we talk about that's it we just wrap it up okay well uh yeah you guys send us your uh your thoughts your comments or and all of that for the shows and you can send your responses for right now to I'm mad, I M M A D at unafraidshow.com, and we will get back to you. Um, yeah, peace out.